Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna look at a Xbox Series X. Yep, the new one. It was brought into the shop because the HDMI port got damaged, it was pushed off a shelf, and, well, things like this do happen. So, we're gonna look at the procedure on how to get the Xbox apart, how to get that port off, and how to get it back together. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. All right, on the bench today, we have an Xbox Series X. Um, and this one came to me because the owner said that the HDMI port got damaged. Now, I know there's already been a bunch of videos on how to disassemble these things, uh, you know, out on YouTube. And for the most part, I've kind of held off on working on any of the, the new consoles, uh, the PS5 and, uh, of course, the new Xboxes, simply because I didn't have a reliable source for parts. Um, things were questionable. But whenever uh, this particular customer asked me, I dug into it, and of course, oops, it seems like now we can, uh, you know, get ports. So, why don't we just start by taking a peek at this HDMI port. Get the microscope and we'll take a closer look. Well, it's not perfectly in focus, but um, as you can clearly see, the end of the uh, end of the port is uh, crushed, and there's pins just hanging. Matter of fact, I see something shiny right down inside there. That's probably a pin that's been pushed over, and of course, we're blown open. So yeah, so that port's that port is busted. All right, so these things aren't too bad to get into, from what I've seen. Um, we've got a screw feels like right there and of course there's a little security label right here so unfortunately there's no good way to do this other than to well that might be a door here's this is a label It is a label, it's just a real thick one. All right, it looks like we don't have security torques anymore. All right, I believe this is gonna be a nine. Let's see if it says on the shaft. This says T8, but they're no longer security torques bits. like we got two pins here in the bottom. Yep. Get a spudger in there to hold it. No problem. We just have two pins here, easily accessed through the bottom. Now this video is probably going to be a little bit cut um, just so I can double check and look on things. Of course, I don't want to damage uh, an Xbox like this at all. And from my understanding, the base just separates by lifting a pin. Okay, it looks like this pin right here is the one we lift. Looks like we have to pull it up pretty high. And then the base turns counterclockwise to come off. We'll set that aside. 
Looks like we have a few screws here to get the fan assembly out and a few screws on the bottom. So let's get this fan out. These are all still these number eights. And that giant fan just slides right out. I'm actually very glad to see that nothing is uh, being forced on, on the, these new Xboxes just because, um, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking that might have been out of the edge of the shot. Here's the, uh, the, the clasp for the bottom. You can see it underneath the, the catch. But I'm glad to see that, you know, once we release these two pins, like this entire back came off. We didn't have to yank or break anything. Um, I know Xboxes in the past have been pretty, pretty rough on getting into them. All right. So I'm going to mark these two black screws and I'm just going to use a black Sharpie. So I know which ones were which. I do that a lot of times with, um, you know, PS4s where they have a lot of different, uh, types of hardware when once you get inside and of course I used to do that with a switch but I've opened so many of them that um, I kind of just know where everything goes these days you know what it feels like it's being supported so I'm going to turn it on its side and finish getting these screws out I don't want it to just fall All right, there's all of our hardware. Looks like we have a ribbon here. Get my glasses, make sure we're not pulling on anything. All right, this is a push release. Um, PS4s use these type. All you do is push right down in the face of this and uh, it releases our ribbon. So don't just yank on it. As you can see, there's these two little ears. And if you pull, it's just gonna break them off. And I think this ribbon is going down into this assembly here. So. All right, I don't wanna use a metal tool for that. Uh, this one looks like it's got a top bail, so a flat spudger is probably the best option. Yes. And uh, as you can see, once, uh, once the tool's in, it just pops open, and this should lift out. Yeah, no problem. All right. And we can just lift the tape here. That should get us where we need to be. All right, uh, I guess before we try to pull this, we should remove the disc drive. Um, I'm only seeing one screw in here again. Same size as the other ones. Looks like there was a little clip here, but with a little wiggling, it just came loose. Um, and we can get to our cables. And yeah, this is the same drive as the uh, Xbox One S and X. So at least uh, we know that 
the drives are available still. But I'm quite sure, I haven't confirmed, but Xbox has been doing this for a long time where you can't just swap the drive. Um, so if you ever have a drive problem, you either have to change the laser or the uh, actual board inside, you know, you have to swap it. So whatever you do, if you're working on one of these, don't just chuck the drive. Um, I'm sure we don't have a way of flashing them yet. So anyway, all right, so I think that's everything. Oh yeah, look at that. Just leftovers for our buttons up front and uh, maybe a transmitter out back. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna set that aside for a moment and deal with this. So we have a power supply, looks like a, a ribbon holding this together and uh, our RF board. So let's get that RF board out of the way. I'm really glad to see that, uh, this is full of dust. No, um, <laughs> I'm really glad to see that Microsoft has gotten away from the security bits. Um, you know, I always keep a number eight security bit over here for the controllers and whatnot, but uh, you know, the, they gotta realize that whatever screw they wind up using, the end users are eventually gonna just have a tool for it anyway. Um, you know, even the oddball stuff, you know, like the game bits that Nintendo and Sega used. Uh, let's see. I was just gonna unplug from the board. There we go. Set that aside. And this big rubber band. And I can set that aside. I was gonna mark it to make sure I remember which side the latch was on, but obviously we got a big hunk of plastic here. But, you know, just for giggles. Now we know exactly which way everything went. All right, so, wow. There's a the massive heat sink on this thing. That's not too dusty. It just has a little bit of stuff in it. So I don't think we want to take that off first. Let's get our power supply out of the way. And it looks like we got a screw here. Maybe a screw, you know, we've got a screw here at the edge. But you know what, it's underneath this edge. So we're gonna have to just take all this apart. So here again, we got black and silver. I always do myself a favor, mark my black screws. You may have seen me do this on my PS4 video, which I'll try to remember and I'll link up there. And I think that's gonna cover our different types. And here again, these all look like number nine torques. <laughs> Needed to finish that. Okay, that looks like everything. I did come back and circle this one screw because as you can see here, there was three shorter silver screws. Um, two of them were in our uh, power jack and then the other one was there. Okay, got one more hide in here in the corner. force anything. Let's see which way that clip goes.
All right, so it's a squeeze connector. And we got one more squeeze connector here. And there is our power supply. We can just leave that right on the tin and set it aside. <laughs> All right, looks like we got a bunch more of these uh, black screws, but maybe we don't have to even deal with those. Hold on. Since we're just doing, all right, we've got a ribbon. All right, we don't have to deal with, since we're doing an HDMI port, we need this bottom board out. Looks like squeeze connectors. Yes. Then we can feed it out. All right. Wow, they really did build this thing quite tough. You know, heavy aluminum, all of our boards are mounted to it and clamped into place. The heat dissipation is going to be great on this thing. Uh, of course, I haven't heard of anybody, you know, overheating them. Of course, we got another RF unit here and an antenna assembly. So it has redundant. I'm assuming the we're going to separate Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi is probably what we're doing. But we can verify that later. Set that board aside. And this is the board we're after. So I'm going to take this ribbon out of this side. I'm actually going to put it back into here. Just squeeze the sides. It should push right back in. Okay. All right, so now we need to separate this board from the heat sink. I'm going to take a look at how this tin's assembled and I'll be right back. All right. Sorry I didn't hit record right away, but um, this one became a bit fiddly. Um, so what it is, is as you can see, there's like all these little dimpled lips. There's no, it's not soldered or, or, or really tied down in, in any way, but they're all these little dimples. For the most part, I started on this edge here that's just the circuit board. So, you know, there's no worry about if you put a tool under it, you know, it's just the edge of the board. So I got that edge up first. And then as I started to walk around this edge, of course, we have all these um, inductors that we got to watch for. And we don't want to crack anything or pry, you know, you can't just put a screwdriver on this side and pry up against these. Um, you'll wind up damaging something. So I started with the longer pick and I just came in close to this edge and you would see like most of these little doubled up ones would lift, but then these single, these single ones would be kind of really snapped in. And you know, if you just get the tool right at the edge and move it, they would start to pop. But eventually I got kind of in the middle, I couldn't get the leverage and couldn't get in from the side. So I tried a spudger like this, um, you know, because the plastic's not gonna damage anything. And of course I couldn't get any angle on them. What I wound up doing is using an extremely fine tip tweezer and just being able to grab each one of these right at the edge and just kind of nudge it out. And as soon as you nudge it, that one would pop and, and then you'd go two or three more. You'd find the next one grabbing. And basically with this edge off, once I got down to about here, the whole thing kind of shifted and then just lifted off. So just keep that in mind. You do not want to use any metal tools around these inductors. These are all the power rails coming into this massive processor. Um, and of course, a regular spudger didn't seem to help. So we can set that aside now. And I believe this is the last we're gonna need to do to get to that port right there. Of course, we got some heat sink goo we're gonna have to do something with, but we'll figure that out. All right, so let's move this clamp, see what happens. I don't know how much pressure is under it, so I'm going to take a couple turns on each side and move back. Let's go in the other direction.
Doesn't look like any of that's screwed in, so I'll just keep going with the clamp screws. This thing has a lot of angle on it. Yeah, you definitely don't want to just remove one screw and then, you know, leave the, the pressure on at an angle. All right. This is symmetrical, so we don't have to worry about its orientation. And I don't see any other hardware. The screws on those heat that heat sink is just going to go be going into that aluminum i'm quite sure so this should lift up and there's our processor doesn't have liquid uh liquid metal like the playstations do um, it just has standard heat sink compound which we will clean and replace um, i'm pretty sure i've got some I've got some different types, we, some silver-based stuff. We're good. Um, all right, so we're in it. Carefully set that aside and see what it's gonna take. I think it's kind of strange that they went ahead and uh, put uh, you know thermal compound on uh, this is going to be our um, you know the pop-in extra drive and of course this is going to be where our uh, factory m.2 solid state drive is going to be but i'm here to work on this i'm not doing as a full teardown but uh, obviously i i needed to show you guys or, or wanted to show you guys what what we see so this board or this port, it's kind of nice. It's right there on the edge. I'm gonna take a, a closer look at it. Just see what we've got. This doesn't look anything out of the ordinary. But what we're gonna do <coughs> is we're gonna go ahead and put <coughs> some of our low temp solder on. And we're gonna put some flux on it. Just because I don't know how strong this board is yet. I know on like a PS5 or a, an old, another Xbox, the, uh, the boards are tough as nails. You can still damage them, but they're extremely, extremely tough. So we got a standard chisel tip on this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, and get some low, low melt on it. And it'll help keep us from damaging anything. Of course, it's all over the place. And what this does is it mixes with our leaded solder, or our unleaded solder, which melts at a high temperature. And this stuff will let it flow at a much lower temperature. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of something underneath this to um, help support. And we'll go ahead and put some low, low melt on these also.
this isn't a hundred percent necessary, but it will help release from the board. And here again, this is the first one of these I've done. So it's always best to err on the side of caution. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little capped on tape. We're in relatively close proximity to a few other components that I'm not 100% sure what they are because, well, like I said, first one I'm into. So this will help protect some of these smaller parts from, from being exposed to the heat. I know it doesn't look like much, but honestly, you know, if we can drop that section of the board a few degrees, then, then we're good. Okay, that was a rough one. Um, I'm not, oh, well, that would be why. Looks like, uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. We're gonna have to do a little cleanup work here and uh, before the board cools off, let's get cleaning. All right, that was a giant pain. <laughs> Sorry about that. This port was not easy to get to release. Um, I had to take a step back. I had to think about it. I had to look it over a little better. 
Um, and in this case, since this one was all metal clad, um, I went ahead and started heating it from the front just to get a better attack at it or better angle on it. And of course we can pull our tape up, get any flux that might have seeped under there. Okay, it looks like all of our holes are open and we are clean. But here again, um, there are just some microscopic filters here. Um, you know, we've got a, a small, it's marked EG. Um, I'm guessing another filter. Um, and of course, it looks like, I'll clean that up too. Um, looks like the original one was glued in place. Let's see what their new port looks like. There's our new one. Yeah, it looks like we get the right ones. So there's a little bit of solder here that looks like it was originally under some little pins here. So we're gonna just go ahead and we'll put our new port aside, move some of our tools. And yes, for anybody who was wondering, that bit of the video is gonna be cut um, or cut up because you don't need to watch me fiddling with it for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, it's always better to go slow and back up than to just pound the, the board with heat. These new boards can take it. Older boards, not so much, but since this is the first time I've done this one, you know, better safe than sorry. So, uh, put a little flux down there. And uh, if you're wondering, I've just been using a standard, it's like, uh, it's like a two millimeter chisel or, or, or no, one, 1. 1.6, millimeter chisel okay do a little bit more cleanup Okay, so now we can turn our heat down a bit. Uh, for anybody wondering, I had my iron up at three or 420. I'm gonna turn it down to 400 because this board's thick, it's gonna draw a lot of heat. And I had the hot air station, the Hoy, up at 475 Celsius. So let's go ahead and tin up these. get the microscope back out you guys might like to see this a little bit more up close I'll be back all right that might give us a little better picture so cleaner tip we already put uh, flux down here on our pads and we'll use our solder a little bit on the tip Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll clear, clean the burnt flux. And we'll see how our new port fits. That well, looks pretty good. I'll flip this around so it's easier to see. Is it recording? Yeah. All right. So there we go. Looks like our new port winds up pretty good. Just 
want to see how it looks underneath. This is one reason why it was so hard to get off is they obviously had um, a little dot of glue. <laughs> so I just want to remove it to make sure we're the whole way down in flush. All right, let's see what that looks like now. Here's our power connector. Yeah, there we go. That's nice and square. So, <clears throat> put a little flux on it. I'm actually going to drop this down to 390. And we'll just come in and well, make sure our tip's clean. There we go. Come in and just put just a touch on our tip hold it again and just kiss them from this side all right now what the extra flux does is it helps, you know, keep the surface tension on the port and uh, lets the solder flow into place. All right. And now, get our sharp tweezers and we'll check our pins. These bits of wire are extremely thin. If they're not soldered, you'll see a move. You know, you can actually, if you're doing this, I would suggest practicing on a, um, like a PlayStation 3. A little bit easier to deal with. Um, Oh, see, right there. There's one that moved. All right, not a problem. Push it back into place. Put a little flux on it. We will just kiss the tip with a little solder and that will flow right down onto it. Okay, we bridged it. We can clean that off. Clean our tip. Put on some flux. Flux is our friend. Flux helps us fix everything. And we should be able to flow that right back onto the tip. And if not, we will kiss it with 
some deep soldering grade. Okay, that one's being stubborn. So we take care of it this way. There we go. And it's not easy to see, but you can see the, the little ball is now, some of it's there, some of it's there. Okay. And we'll check it one more time, make sure that we are secure. Yep. Now we're soldered. Good. All right. Now we can solder the port to the board. Don't really need the extra flux, but I always put extra flux. And I'm gonna turn this back up just because of the heat of the board. Back up to 410. All right, there we go. All right, and just clean up our flux. And see how nice and bright and shiny our new solder joints are. So everything flowed real nice. And that is the port. Now I got to put the thing back together. <laughs> All right. Um, eh, you saw it come apart. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this so it doesn't turn into an hour long video. Um, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. We got it all back together and there's no extra screws, which is always a bonus. Uh, the only two screws left are the ones for our back cover. So let's. Um, Let's see if we got our uh, problem solved. Let's go ahead and move this over to our HDMI 1. And we get a power cable and an HDMI cable. I believe this just, yeah, this just uses a standard. We're going to go ahead and set it on its side just because that's the way my cable likes to sit. I don't want to put any undue stress on the new port. And put some power on it. Keep our fingers crossed. That's a good sign. And there we got it. Woo! This isn't one that I want to mess up. Um, I have to admit, I mean, every once in a while you're working on somebody's equipment and something goes wrong. It's inevitable. Um, 
But since there are no parts out there for these, and I can't even go as far as to just buy somebody a new one, um, Perry, gotta love it. Um, anyway, so it, I'm happy that this one was uh, a success. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and make them down below. Give us a thumbs up, and if you have to give us a thumbs down, please make a comment. Let me know what I can do better. And while you're clicking down there, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for us, because it really does help out the channel. So, thanks for being here, and I'll see you on the next video.